Welcome to the do-it-yourself home energy audit. This video is designed to help you look around your home for any potential problems and to help you save money on your energy bills. Let's start here. If at some point you experience a dramatic increase between one month's electric bill and the next, don't immediately blame it on the meter. Most likely the meter is not the cause of a high bill. More than likely, the source of that problem can be traced to the ductwork, heating and cooling system, or the water heater. We're going to cover some of the big ticket items that might cost you more up front, but you'll have more potential savings in the long run. And along the way, we'll point out some simple steps that you can take to help maintain your home and make it run more efficiently. Many of the tips we'll offer are simple lifestyle changes or do-it-yourself projects that any homeowner or renter can tackle. Other projects suggested, like adding additional insulation or caulking, are tasks most people who are handy around the house can do. But you'll want to leave things like servicing your cooling system or changing a water heater element to a professional. These tips will make your home healthier, more comfortable, and possibly make you eligible for your EMC's lowest residential rate. Let's get started. I'm here with Bruce, and I understand that heating and cooling make up most of my energy bill cost. That's correct. Uh, by maintaining your system, making sure it works efficiently, then I'll give you the most savings on your heating and cooling bill. Now, the way this system works, this is the indoor unit, and all the air from the house has to come to this point and then be redelivered. So it's very important that this airflow is sealed and that it's continuous. And there's several things you can do to make sure that there's proper airflow. The easiest one is to make sure that the filter is changed and replaced monthly. You remove the access panel and pull out the filter. Now in this case, this one's extremely dirty and needs to be replaced. Replace it monthly. In your case, you may have a permanent filter. That filter needs to be washed out and then can be reused. The other thing you want to look at is to make sure you're not pulling air from places you don't want it to come from. For example, this unit's in the basement. There's holes and openings here in front of the unit where the refrigerant lines go in and that's pulling air from the basement into the unit. We don't want that air into the unit. We want only air from the house to come to the unit and then be returned to the unit. It's important too that extra heat is not lost or picked up by the air duct system. This duct is insulated and sealed properly. It should be sealed with a material called mastic, which is an adhesive putty that makes airtight connections on all the ducts. Where the ducts come together, is where the areas, most of that leakage occurs. Bruce, what else can the homeowner do to save money on their heating and cooling bill? There are actually many things you can do. Ceiling fans, for example. A ceiling fan will make you feel two to three degrees cooler than without the fan. By operating the fan, you can actually raise your thermostat level. That makes the air conditioner run less often. Another thing is the windows. Make sure on sunny days, particularly on the east and west facing windows, that you have the blinds closed. That not only blocks out the heat, but also reduces heat transfer out of the, the glass windows. Other things is that airflow we talked about earlier. Make sure any vents that you have in the floor are not blocked by furniture and they're not blocked by rugs or other items. Other things is dress appropriately for the season. Summertime, wear light, loose-fitting clothing. Wintertime, make sure you wear, wear warm, thick clothing. Also, heat producing appliances in the summer. Try to avoid using them during the hottest part of the day. And your thermostat, for example. You can install what's called a programmable thermostat. Programmable thermostats have a built-in timer that allow you to automatically change the temperature when you're away from home or during the winter months at night while you're sleeping. This can save anywhere from 8 to 10 percent off your heating cooling bill. Bruce, are there any suggestions for the outside unit? Let's go outside and take a look. So we're outside the house and you can see this home has two units. That's right, this is a two-story house, so there's a unit for the downstairs and a unit for the upstairs. This unit, it's important to have proper airflow moving across this heat exchanging coil. 
And so this is an ideal location. Once this area is mowed, grass clippings can be pulled into the unit, insulating this coil, making it use more energy. So it's important to keep this area clean and this coil clean. This is the condensation drain line. Your air conditioner does two important jobs. It lowers air temperature and also extracts moisture out of the air. That extracted moisture is discharged from here in, the, in water. If you don't see water coming out of this line when the air conditioner is running, there could be a problem with the unit. Set your air conditioner thermostat to 78 degrees or higher in the summer and keep your furnace at 68 degrees or cooler in the winter. Each degree difference from these recommended settings will increase your energy costs from 3 to 5 percent. So if you set your air conditioner to 75 instead of 78 degrees, that small 3 degree difference in temperature could actually cost you 15 percent more in cooling expenses. Water heating is the next biggest expense in most homes, right after heating and cooling. The newer water heaters have better insulation, so it takes less energy to heat with water. We're here with Greg. Greg, tell us how we can save here. The first thing we want to do is check the temperature of the water heater. The water heater should be set to no more than 120 degrees. Not only does that save energy, it helps prevent scalds. We check the temperature of the water heater right here at the unit behind these doors. It takes a screwdriver. You want to make sure the power is off first. And all you do is adjust the dial inside till the pointer is pointing at 120 degrees. Then put the cover back on and you're finished. Another thing we can do here at the unit is to install a water heater blanket. Those are available at home improvement stores and it adds another layer of insulation to the water heater itself. This stops a lot of the loss of heat from the water inside the tank to the atmosphere outside. Next, we want to insulate the hot water pipes. Every hot water pipe that you see under your house or in the basement, any hot water pipe that you can get to, you want to insulate. You can also buy pipe insulation at home improvement stores. It's already preformed and pre-split, so it's very easy to install. But not only do we want to insulate every hot water pipe, we want to insulate about three to four feet of the cold water pipe that comes into the water heater. Because when the water heater is not running, heat will migrate back out of the cold side and you'll lose heat there as well. A couple other things you want to look for at the unit. If you ever see hot water or steam coming out of the temperature and pressure valve, you want to call a professional immediately because there's a big problem there. That means that the water heater is getting too hot and it could be a danger, a dangerous situation for your family. Also, if you notice a sudden decrease in hot water, or if you notice a, a sudden temperature spike in your water temperature, those are also signs of problems and you'll want to call a, a plumber or a professional to fix those as well. Greg, what are some other things that we can do to save money? Surprisingly though, most of the cost of heating water is not determined here at the unit but it's determined where it's used. So if you can cut down on the amount of hot water that comes out of the faucets and showers, you can save water heating dollars. One way to do that is to install low flow faucets and low flow shower heads anywhere in the house that you have a regular faucet or shower head. That saves energy, plus it also saves water. But one of the best tools you have to save water heating energy is right here by the habits that you use throughout the house and the way you use hot water. For example, don't pre-rinse the dishes with hot water before you put them in the dishwasher. Don't turn on the shower and let it run before you get in it. Don't let the water run down the sink when you're shaving. By changing your habits and thinking about the way you use hot water, you can really save a lot of water heating dollars. Leaks here can add up to higher bills and waste. A leak can be as easy to fix as getting a new washer for your faucet. Dripping faucets don't just waste water. Dripping hot water is a constant drain on your energy bill. A hot water faucet that drips once per second will waste 2,300 gallons of water a year, plus the electricity used to heat it.